Hello, my name is Duncan and welcome to uh, Back Away From The Donkey or Bath Books. And this is day seven, I think, of my Bookmas videos. And I thought I'd do something that I don't normally do, which is a bit of a shelf tour. And the reason I'm doing this is I am going to be sorting out today the mess that is these shelves behind me. I have two loads of shelves that you probably see behind me when I do some of my videos. I've got other shelves in this room, other shelves around the house, I've got boxes full of books, but these are ones that sort of stuff I'm reading and transient ones and bits I like. So I thought I'd sort these out. So I'm going to switch from this front facing camera to the other one. It is a very dreak day out there. So the light is pretty bad. I've got some artificial lights. It's hopefully going to light this enough. And we will see how we go through this. I've never done one of these before. And I'll just show you what I've got here. Excuse me while I pass okay, over to my in. And we're going to pass through. I've got. I said I will stand back. I'll show you. It's a bit of a mess back here, which is why I want to sort this out. We do have a pair of trainers on the bottom shelf, which I don't know why. But I'm just going to go through and show you what you got there. And I've got some weird things at the top as well. So let's start with these weird things at the top. My wife's into crochet. And before I show you this, this gorgeous, gorgeous crochet dragon that she made. And he's just up there because we couldn't work out anywhere to put him. And also we have Bob the Builder up there, but that's another discussion for another day. Uh, this up here is some stuff from my, you may have seen some other videos that I lost my 16 year old golden retriever early on this year. And this is some of his bits that we're up there just because uh, we've got our ass to put them in and we're going to store them somewhere. And if you look down here, we've got some 2000 AD. This is really quite a random map of stuff. Let me just take Harley McGolden stuff off there. Put that down there. Oh. And let's start. This is volume one of Rogue Trooper. Great. From a fantastic 2000 AD. This is volume one. They've obviously been shrunk down to smaller size because when these were published, these would have been A4 size. As I said, this, these shelves are quite, quite random. So, I was there. I told, told you, for some reason, I have to start with memories. The William Shatner book there, and it's basically his memories of filming the original series of Star Trek. Uh, obviously, goes written with Chris Gresky, who sort of did a very good job of it. As actually, if you're into Star Trek, that's well worth reading. And the movie memories one done by with Chris Gresky is worth it as well. And I don't know where that is. And then I have the comic adaptation of William Shatner's Tech War tech world and William Shatner's tech books get a bit of a sort of people joking about them but they were actually ghost written by Ron Goulart and Ron Goulart is a great writer so as much as people take the piss out of them they're quite good and this is the they only did one volume of this but this is the And I think it's really quite good. And then we've got the Star Wars Marvel Years comics. I've got the original comics, which I'll show you at one time, that were released in 78, that were the British versions. But these are the collections of all of them. And I really like them because after the films finished, they did obviously did the dramatisations of the films. They sort of had a bit of a free thing, so you get stories that are a lot more varied than you'll find sort of modern Star Wars ones because they've almost given a free hand, which I really like. Some Star Trek books, Generations. There's a four part one here, which has got each next generation, Deep Space Nine, uh, and original Star Trek, and they're all related, which is quite good. And I've got one book of the Dominion War there. The book adaptation of Generations and Insurrection, and that one. Yeah, so then let's 
go down to the next shelf. You see, I've got some. These, they are from representative of ones from the animated TV series, if you wanted to know. Part of my Asimov, and I have a lot of Asimov, I'm a big fan of Asimov. Uh, but not all of it's here, some of it's in boxes. We've got the Harbacks here of Foundation to Earth, Prelude, Ford Foundation, Second Foundation Trilogies. And here I've got some of the collections, Second Foundation paperbacks, Foundation's Edge. I don't know, for some reason. These are some of his um, non fiction science books which I'm just starting to collect those because I never bought them originally. I'm starting to try and pick those up because I find them really interesting. My ambition is to try and get them all, but it'll probably never work. Uh, we've got Nightfall 1, Nightfall 2 with the original short stories and Nightfall in them. If we go to this side as much as we've got. We've got Robot Dreams, which is another one of his short story collections, which has got this gorgeous picture from Ralph Quarry on the front, which I love. But, yep. Yeah. I see autobiography of Philip K. Dick, which I've shown before. These are some of my Philip K. Dick because I've got a load of the pamper ones in a box in the cupboard in the other room. Well, I'll tell you something about these. Is I'll start off with showing you the Penguin Man in the High Castle one. But these ones I've got. Yeah, when I first, in the early 90s, they republished a load of Philip K. Dick stuff just after why well, he died in the mid 80s. And where is it? A Scanner Darkly. And I brought that then. Scanner so Darkly. And if you notice, it's got the big K for the K Dick there. Well, they've republished these since, and they haven't got the K there. And me being a obsessive person, I'm trying now to collect all of the ones that were published with the big K on it, because <laughs> they're from that era. So these are the ones of those I've got. I said, I think I've got most of the K Dick books somewhere. See the K? Now wait for last year. Andrew's Dream of Electric Sheep, the Free Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch, which, oop, hopefully this is steady enough, and the Clans of the Alfie Moon, and I've got the Zap Gun below here. I've got another version of the Zap Gun on Panther paperbacks as well, which has got a gorgeous cover on it, and for some reason I've got the Demolished Man and Alfred Bester one at the same time. In the mid-1990s, what I call the Great Purge, uh, due to my work at the time and various situations, huge amounts of my book collection went. They disappeared because I moved around for work. Uh, people went to be looking after it and lots of it disappeared. And I am slowly trying to replace a lot of things. Just look at me. So I've got two of the collections with the big K on it, uh, which is the second variety one. And... The father thing. I've got various other collections I said in the box for all my other Philip Dick books, which probably cover most of the short stories he did, but I'd like to get the full collections in that format because it would be quite nice to. For a lot of stuff I'd like to get, but it'd probably taking years because costs some money and things I get excited about. Two cart with Kurt Vonnegut. I quite like Kurt Vonnegut, I haven't got huge amounts. The Slaughter has five and slapstick and the Philip K. Dick book on film that I've shown before. Let me put this back. Okay, let's just let me have a quick cut for a second. Just want to check some ink. Okay, we're on the next shelf down. So I would have just cut this in hopefully. Here we are. This is a mummy that my 
beautiful wife made. I told you that she was crochet. And isn't he good? Also have a stormtrooper there as well. Random things I have lying around. And we have Deathstroke there as well. Let's move Deathstroke and I'll show you the books there. I hope I won't be a bit quick on the shelf because I'll always be here for days. So these are some of the original science fiction masterworks and I prefer these HD Wells there. And they've different to them as they have the number there and now numbered spine. Let's see if I can get that to focus. And I have several. Sounds like I've got a career arriving. But yeah, I've got a Gene Wolf fifth head of Cerebus. I've also got one somewhere of the another copy of that. But with the Bruce Pennington picture on it. I'm just going to deliver it. I might have a look and see what that is in a minute. HD Wells, Flame of Tears. And these are obviously the new Masterworks collections. Food for the Gods. I picked that up locally actually. It was in a charity shop. And the Fountains of Paradise. Which I struggle with obviously Clark. He's one of these writers. I see how clever he is and think I should like him. But every time I read him I think, yeah. Okay, Fall of Moon Dust. Which is like the Poseidon Adventure on the Moon in dust, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this collection, the Glance Sci-Fi one, was the one precursor to the Fantasy Masterworks one. I actually got two of those, or three of those actually. So I've got Bob Shaw's A Reef of Stars. And I've got Christopher Priest's Fantastic Inverted World. And then we have Fantasy Masterworks, which I've done the same format. I've got a whole of the book of the new sun in these, but I've also got it. Gene Wolf, I love Gene Wolf. And that's the uh, first one, which is the Shadow of the Torturer and the Claw of the Conciliator, all in one collection. And if I go up here, we have the second one there, which is uh, the Sword of the Lictor and the Citadel of the Autark. Then we've got M. John Harrison's. Viraconium, which everyone should read. Obviously Conan. And the Complete Enchanter and the Sprague to Camp and Fletcher Pratt, which is great as well. The second volume of the Conan books. And I think these two collections are the complete works of Robert Howard's on Conan, but I could be wrong. You might have to ask Michael K. Vaughan because he's more up on that sort of thing. Jack Williamson's uh, Darker Than You Think, which is a fantastic werewolf book that I only read this year. I read it just in October. It's great. And also Jonathan Carroll's Voice of a Shadow, which is a very peculiar book, but it's interesting. It's great. It's worth a read. And Tim Powers' The Drawing of the Dark and Ken Grimwood's replay. I'm going to some of my G-Morph. I said some of my G-Morph is... In another box, I've got the Wizard of the Night collection there. The Wizard of the Night. Gene Wolfe is a, was a genius. He didn't write anything bad as far as I'm concerned. For some reason, I said, this is the Claw of the Conciliator, which obviously I've got in that collection there. I have all of the four books with these wonderful uh, Bruce Pennington pictures, but for some reason, I only have the Claw here. Don't ask me why. And for some reason, I've only got two books of the Long Sun on the books here. See, I told you this is disorganized shelving. Then we have the first volume of Soldier in the Mist, which I think you can get a double collection with both books. Castle View, which is another peculiar book. Then we have this book that everybody seems to forget about, Gene Wolfe, called Pandora by Holly Hollander, which is probably one of the most normal books he ever wrote. But I really find it quite interesting. And then you give Free Live Free, which I need to do a reread of soon, which is a quite an unknown book. Uh, I think the last time I read it was about 20, 30 years ago. It's a... I think nowadays people will call it an urban fantasy, but it is very good. Okay. 
but it's quite a peculiar one. But I might have to reread that. I think it'd be an interesting one to talk about. So that is that shelf. I think what I'll do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this side because I, that I'm doing here today, and then tomorrow I will probably do the other side. This is how successful this is. You have a Welsh dragon that I actually got from Wales. Another one of my wife's crochet creations. So, uh, let me kneel down a bit and let me have a look at these. So we got the two, two of the Helic, Brian Lawrence's Heliconia books. I don't know where the hell the third one is, but it's around somewhere. <laughs> I don't know why I've only got two of them there. Uh, Philip Jose Farmer's Dayworld. The other two books are on another shelf for some reason. You can be the stainless steel rat I picked up recently. Oh, sorry. Sorry. You can be the stainless steel rat, which I picked up recently, which is one of the um, sort of adventure game books that they did in the uh, late 80s and early 90s. And I just picked this up because I like it. Now, sort of more interest wise. Credit Pole Collection Survival Kit. Um, Raven, Sword Mistress of Chaos. I still, I keep, I want to read that. I keep getting meaning to, and I never do. Global Orange. For some reason, I've got two of the stainless steel wrap books. I've got some of the other covers. That's the Saves the World. And that's another Bruce Pennington cover on that version. And I don't know where my other ones are, as I said. I've got some random things. Cities in flight. There's gorgeous rounded corners there. But then I have all the books separately there as well. So these are quite random shelves. So I said stuff I've got elsewhere. Probably makes a collection. So I really need to organise a lot more. You know, I've got two of Ben Bova's Grand Tour books here, and I don't think I've got them all, but I've got about 10 of them. It's Mars and Venus, in between Kim Stanley Robinson's Red Mars. So where green and blue Mars are, I must be on another shelf somewhere. So a few Harry Harrison books here. Big, I love Harry Harrison. Play from Space. Two Tales of Eight Tomorrows. It's one of my favorite short story collections. Lifeboat. Which is written with Gordon Dixon. The Men from Pig and Robot, which is like a satire, it's more of a children's book, but it's great fun. One Step from Earth, which is a really interesting collection because it's about matter transfer and sort of teleportation. But he, all the short stories, but he sort of explores it in a way other people haven't, like how it's used for war and travel and stuff like that. That's another book that I might have to do a little talk on at some point. Then we've got Skyfall. Technicolor Time Machine. War with the Robots. And Invasion Earth. Just have a quick break there for a couple of seconds while I put this back. Okay. I hit some Roger Zelazny. Of course, with Seb Fred Saber Hagen. Book that's quite underrated, nobody remembers. Damnation Alley, and this is the film tie-in version. And because Damnation Alley was released the same year as Star Wars, and the Star Wars novel did so well, it was one of the sort of precursors to the film coming out. They really like pushing from the publishers of Star Wars. And to Dine Ilta Bar, Ital Bar, or whatever it is. Another Frederick Paul collection. Robert Heinland, Day After Tomorrow. And then Frederick Pohl, The Way the Future Was, which is like a memoir. Another Heinland, Glory Road. Friday, which is a book I really like, though it has got a very controversial sort of uh, rape scene at the beginning, which is intriguing. And I've got two versions of Dream Park, because I like Dream Park. It's, one, it's not the best novel in the world, but it's one of my favourite sort of rereads. 
Clifford Samak City, which everybody should read. Though it does play loose and fast with evolutionary biology. Martian Chronicles. You don't want to change hands with my camera. Christopher Priest. Uh, yeah. The affirmation. This is a Victor Glantz Cypher Classics, which is previous to the ones with the yellow bits I got. So this was late 70s. They did all these editions. Let me go to some more oldest. Version of Hot House. The 80 minute hour with this. Really interesting cover. Uh, 80 minute hour is a space opera which has actually got singing in it. <laughs> You've not read that? Ah, this is another VG S of Classics, which is Galaxies Like Greater Sand. Another Aldous. <laughs> Summertide Charles Sheffield, which I haven't got around to reading yet. I've only just recently sort of discovered Charles Sheffield and some of Gordon Dixon's Dorsey series. And I said I'm going to leave that there for the shelves today because it's taking me longer than I thought it would. And then I can sort out part of this. And then over the next couple of days, I'll give you some more shelves. How about that for a promise? Okay, I'll leave that there for a second. I might go and check the mail and see what we do. The mail wasn't the mail wasn't anything exciting. It was um some courier stuff from my wife. And I said I will do some more of the shelves probably tomorrow or the day after. Because it actually takes me longer than I thought it would. So I've done about three shelves now and I said I'm gonna be tidying them up soon anyway, so this thought it would be quite interesting. So yeah, so that's the end of my uh day six, seven of uh, my bookmas videos and I said hopefully I'll be getting out soon because we were meant to be picking up a Christmas tree yesterday but that didn't happen so it'll be the back end of the week and I will speak to you all very soon